Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the AV-8B and we're looking at JDAMs. At the moment, December 2019, we have one bomb, which is a GBU 38 500 pound INS GPS guided bomb. On pylons 2, 3, 5 and 6, pylons 2 and 6, we can have single GBU 38, a twin or a triple. So we'll take twins there. And on the inner pylons, we can have a single or a double, giving us a total of 10 GBU-38s that we can carry. So we'll go for eight because we don't want to be greedy. We'll also want a targeting pod, as we'll show in a bit. We have our target a few miles in front of us, and there are two methods we can use to drop these bombs. Absolute method or relative method, otherwise known as pre-planned mode or TOO, Target of Opportunity. And those are the terms we're going to use to keep them in line with the Hornet and other aircraft. First, we'll look at Target of Opportunity. And the idea of Target Opportunity is for dropping one bomb at a time that you can designate with your own sensors. So we're going to be using the T-Pod. Let's get it fired up. Find a target. Point track. Unsafe the laser. Turn it to a laser. We'll leave that there for now. Master arm on air to ground we're going to go to our stores page we're going to select our jdams here is our current option set we can set our bomb up through here like normal or we can do it from the odu up here so we're going to go fuse instant safe or delay one we're going to go for instant terminal we can choose the heading so this is the offset bearing between minus 90 and plus 90 degrees for the bomb entry and here is the angle in elevation between 0 and 90 degrees of the bomb fall on target and when we click on them we will be able to enter them here on the UFC scratch pad but it's currently early access that's not here but bear in mind that's something that will be here target is not relevant for target of opportunity mode next we're going to have a look at the controls that we're going to be using today so to drop the bomb we've got push and hold of bomb pickle to essentially transfer our t-pod targeting information to our bomb we've got press and hold of waypoint increment for more than one second to undesignate a target we've got ag target undesignate and cage run cage will employ or unemploy our terminal options that we set up down there so we must have a t-pod to use too mode because we must be able to laser range to get the necessary information so we're going to laser range here you can see a little bit of messing around there and then we've got a, our d there for designation next we're going to press and hold waypoint increment for more than one second press and release and we've now got our information up let's have a look at the hud our jdam symbology this here is our timing circle and it will come into play soon. This is our marker for minimum release. What will happen as we get closer to the target, a counter will count down from here anti-clockwise and once it reaches past this point here, we've dropped we've got past our minimum release point. So we want to drop between there and there and there will be more information on that. This will be either N or T. N means that no terminal options are set obviously because we can't at the moment and T will say that the terminal options are set. This is our currently selected target point. Now, because we're doing this in TOO mode, it will be zero. The zero will be small if we are outside our maximum launch range. It will be a large zero if we are within our maximum launch range. We're on G Auto for drop mode. We've got eight times J82s. Our target is 6.5 miles away from us. There is our T-Pod slew indicator. There is our diamond target indicator. And what we can do for fun is we can go out of here and we can go HSI here. This is our LAR, Launch Acceptability Region. That is us there. That is the maximum range we can drop the bomb. That is the minimum range we can drop the bomb. That is the target there. So we have to drop it between these two here. These are dynamic, so they will change depending on altitude and speed. If we are up high and going fast, this would be a massive circle because we're down low, it's a very small circle. And you can keep an eye. Well, I like to drop this bomb by eyeing the HSI and the HSD and the HUD here. So we're going to unpause now, move towards the target, and we'll show what to do next. So you can see as we started speeding up and gaining altitude, the circles got bigger dynamically. So what we can see is this digit here is large, and that means that we're now inside the LAR. Our range counter here is moving down, as you can see. And we've also got a number. This is our percentage to hit. This will grow from 0 to 100 about here, and back down to 0 roughly down here. The whole idea is to drop at with the largest percentage of hit, which is at 100. So I'm going to press the weapons release button when we get to 100 once, and the bomb will be underway. 
bomb drop. And let's follow the bomb. And that is going to be a direct hit, I reckon. Kaboomy! That was TOO mode. Now we're going to set up for pre-planned mode. The beauty about pre-planned mode is that we can ripple more than one bomb at once, as you can see. First thing I'm going to do here is undesignate with the undesignate button so we no longer have that target. And pause. Next, for our pre-planned mode, we need to go and put some pre-planned targets in. The whole point of pre-planned mode is you know where the bad guys are even before you take off. So what we're going to do first of all is click on this mark and we're going to put one blank label roughly in the middle of the hostiles just to mark that as our area. So we're going to press mark again and mark label on off. And this time we're going to put one down on this target here. Ping. And we're going to call it capital T of Tango 01, our first target. And mark, uh, mark again and T02. Again. T03. Again. T044. Again. T05 and I'm getting bored at that point but you could go all the way to have 18 points and you could suck those 18 targets back into the Harrier. So let's bring this data now into the Harrier. This is called the ATHS, the Automatic Target Handoff System. It's how we get targets from the F10 map in real time into the Harrier. Now note I've got a new Harrier to do this. That's because it's much easier to bring those targets via ATHS into the Harrier's cast system when you are on the ground. You can do it from the air but it's more difficult and I'll show both methods. Right shift and kilo for kneeboard, shift the page right. Here is our target list currently empty. Press right shift, right alt and 8 it says. Right shift, right alt and 8. It's now been populated with the 5 points T1 to T5 with these MGRS coordinates with that elevation ASL and these DCS record numbers. These are how the points are stored in the DCS game engine. Kilo to get out of there. I want to make sure now that they've come through to my CAS system. So menu, CAS, and I'm going to go Oracle. And we can see in our CAS system are the five points. Here are the request numbers from DCS. Here are the UTM, the MGRS. Here's the time that they were added. And we can see here that they've been automatically assigned to Harrier targets as T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. And that's why we did it on the ground. If we do it on the ground like this, it automatically assigns targets. If we did it in the air, we would have to assign the targets manually. Let's show you how we could do that. So we could call up the first one we've got selected here by going to cast page. That is the first one there. You can see the REQ number there. And if I wanted to assign a target to it, I could go use on the scratch pad. I could assign target one. To that DCS point and I'm going to go enter. It's now assigned T1 to that point there and just make sure it's still on T1 and you can see it's T1 still. So that's the benefit of coming down and landing so you can do this ATHS properly. So we've got our five targets marked up. I'm going to put it back to the default cast page. Just going to go over to our SMS, select our weapons, set up again. So fusing, set up. Then we're going to click target to assign the different pre-planned targets to our bombing list. You can see we've got target points one, two, three, and four. Do we want to bomb, bomb all of them? Sure. Let's bomb one, two, three, and four. What about the other targets? Well, if we press target here, we cycle through to the next ones. We can bomb five as well if we want. Cannot bomb six and seven and eight because they don't exist. I haven't actually plugged them in. For this one, we will just go and drop a ripple of four bombs. You can see the target points up here. So we're just going to take five off, showing that you can just erase one if you want and cycle back. I'm just going to bomb targets 1, 2, 3 and 4. Let's get in the air and give that a try. And I want to go to HSI for my guidance, or HSD, sorry. You can see there are actually four times LARs there, but because they're so close to each other, they're basically on top of each other. So we can basically use the first LAR as a guide for all of them. Other than that, the symbology is the same. We can see that we've got four targets, th four, three, two, and one. They are in order of closeness to me, so four is the closest. Seven J downs left, eight miles to target, Otherwise, just the same. Unpause, off we go. Get ourselves oriented to target. Now just be patient and wait for our counter. Wait for the counter. I'm going to do it from about 90, plus 90 to minus 90 for the actual drop. So we've got one, two, three, four bombs away. One, two, three, four. Pretty sweet, huh? So that shows using the GBU 38s on TOO single targeting or pre-planned multi-targeting. And that's it. I hope that was useful. See you later.